What's going on you guys and welcome back to another LumaFusion tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna dive into the masking part of LumaFusion once again. And most of you know that I've done several videos on masking when I was doing breakdown of Ben TK's After Effects effects but I made them with Affinity Photo and LumaFusion and I also done other several types of masking transitions like the through sunglasses effect and and so on. Now all of those, most of those, almost all of those included Affinity Photo. Now this technique we're gonna do today is only with the use of Luma Fusion. So you don't need any third party apps to do this. It's really, really easy to do. But of course it's a bit time consuming depending on how fast you want the transition to be because you know, you don't have any of those awesome features in, uh, in Luma Fusion yet. Hopefully we get them soon. That would be awesome to get some new features updates soon because uh, it's kind of getting limited again you know because <laughs> we kind of max out every single update before for the next one comes so hopefully we can see that soon uh, but also if you're new to this channel and want to see more videos like this make sure to that subscribe button that will be highly appreciated and uh, with that said let's jump over to uh, Luma Fusion, and let me show you how easy it is to make this and how to smoothen it out so it gets perfect. So once we get over to the iPad here, you can see the project that I was working on for my latest uh, travel sequence, which I'm also made in Luma Fusion here, as you can see. Uh, now, a lot of you have been asking for masking uh, transition tutorials, and I made a couple of masking transition tutorials in the past as well. Now, I usually made those with Affinity Photo. And a lot of you probably saw this transition right here. And this is the masking transition from that latest travel sequence, which I made as well. Now, this transition here is made entirely in LumaFusion. There is no need for any third party apps to make masking transitions like this. You're just going to add more time to your workflow if you're going to do it uh, with an additional app like Affinity Photo because you're going to do the exact same thing in Affinity Photo that you're going to do here. So instead of doing it two times, you will have to do it three times if you're going to use Affinity Photo. Now this is fairly simple and extremely easy to do. It just takes time. So let's say that I have a project like this and I want this masking to uh, to be like this as well. I want to have the tree coming to the right and I want a new scene here. Now. To work on a project and to have clips like this, let's say this was not a transition and I want to make it as a transition. Then I want to take this top clip here, which is the one with the masking now. And I already prepared a different project for that. So we're gonna go into that now. And as you can see here, we have the exact same clip. Now, if I'm gonna reset everything here, I'm just gonna delete the color grading. We don't need that and I'm gonna delete everything here as well. We don't need that either. And uh, if we take a look at the clip now, and you have a clip like this, you would need to adjust. Now it looks perfect. My wife is going towards the tree here and behind the tree, and once she gets out to the next side here, you can still see that the tree is in the frame. So we don't want that. We want it to be out of the frame so it's easier for us to do the masking. Now let's start the uh, first process here. So we're gonna go into edit on this clip, and we're gonna go to the point where this clip has to stop or where we want the clip to stop. Let's say that is here. And what we're gonna do now is to simply scale this in and move it to the right here. Just scale a little bit more and move a little bit more to the right. So we're sure that the tree is outside of the frame here. Like that. Now, once we've done that, we will have a clip that looks fairly similar, but it's more zoomed in. Now, as we don't have a tree at the end here, we can easily do some masking. So step two is to add an overlay title. Now we're going to stretch this to the beginning and end here. And we're going to go into edit on this text layer here. And we're simply just going to find a point where the start is of the masking. So that would be somewhere around here. Now we're going to go out to the timeline again and make a cut and delete the first part. Now let's move over to the text layer here. We're going to delete 
your text here and we're going to add a shape. Now, the way that I like to do this is to change the color to green. However, you can choose whatever color you want. And I want to go to the middle like here. And I'm simply going to place this somewhere like this. And I'm just going to take an angle to it like that. I'm going to duplicate this and move this above and try to follow follow the uh, shape of the tree here with these uh, shapes and move it down like that. So now we have the first one and uh, we can go through a little bit more here to see if there's any other different things that we want to, uh, to adjust. And uh, as we go through here, it looks quite decent here. Maybe we can just uh, level these out a tiny bit so they're not that like yeah something like that so now that we're done with that we can go to the point where this first has to start and which is here and we can go over to uh, frame and fit and over to size and position make a keyframe and we still have to scale this up so it's easier to use along the way now we made the first keyframe now we can go a little bit forward in time and we can drag this over to the right here to follow the tree and just take the end here, the left side of the shape and just drag out of the frame. Just move it a little bit closer here and just continue doing that. You can also use the sliders down here if you want to do that. And that, let's move over to the last one here. Just going to place it like that and like that. So now we're basically done with this uh, first section here, but we still have to go frame by frame because to get the best result and for this to be perfect, we will have to do it frame by frame or as close to frame by frame as possible. Now let's uh, go to the beginning here and you can see that we have some angle to it here and we're simply going to just rotate this just a tiny bit like that. Just place it where we want to have it. And let's go to the beginning and we can see that we have some tiny bit of reveal of the, the scenery back here. So we're going to just place this like that. And uh, yeah, so at the beginning here, it can just start outside and then it comes in and it reveals a little bit more here. So we can rotate this scale and rotate. Just like that So now that we're finished with the uh, masking, we can go back to our timeline and we can see what it looks like. And here you can see that the shapes are coming in. And at the first sight, it doesn't really look that good. And there might be adjustments that we need to make like here. And uh, let's see here, we can just move this a tiny bit. And uh, it's important that you go through the timeline so you can see if there is any things that you need to adjust to make this as good as possible. Once you're finished with this, we're simply going to render this out. Even though this is 1080p, we're going to choose 4K just to have some quality left when we are rendering and uh, importing this to our timeline again. And uh, once we've finished with the rendering, we can easily find the clip here and we can drag it over here just so you can see like that. But now let's go back to the project that we was working on and uh, import this to this project instead. So now we have the file here and it looks like this. We want this to reveal this clip right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to just remove the uh, clip, which is on track number three here. So we only have this one and this one. 
The next thing is to go into edit on this, which has the uh, green uh, masking here. And I'm simply gonna go to the masking where it is uh, visible here and go over to the keyhole and choose a green screen key. Now this will look quite bad at first, as you can see there's artifacts here and it doesn't really look good. So what I found to be the best was to take the hue range to 40, just to the, the normal, and take saturation and brightness range down to 70. And that looks a lot better right away. And uh, let's scrub through here to see if we have any other artifacts going on. And no, this looks great. There's still some in the trees here, but here's the way to fix that. So the first thing we're gonna do is to go to the point where we have the tree almost covering the uh, screen here and just right before this uh, reveal is coming in. So we're gonna go to around, let's see here, make a keyframe. I'm gonna go a couple of frames right before this starts. So that will say that will be around actually one, but we can go two. And on the first one here, we're gonna take everything down to zero. So that means if we now take a look at the first video here, which is this, you have no artifacts because the chroma key is disabled. And you have the chroma key being applied and revealing the next clip here. Now to smoothen this out even more, because you can see that the lines of the tree are quite harsh and uh, it's good, but it's not really the best. So now to smoothen this out is to go over to the water droplet here and add a Gaussian 5. Instantly you can see that the tree is looking a lot better and we kind of blur out those uh, fine edges there and makes it a lot more appealing to uh, to whoever is watching the travel video. Now we're gonna do this in the exact same way here. We're gonna go to the point right before this is revealed here, uh, like that. Make a keyframe and go a couple of frames forward in time, like that. And then we can apply a Gaussian, let's say we're gonna start with nine. So now if you go out to the timeline here and scrub through, you will see that you have the uh, original clip here with no chroma key effects, no artifacts, nothing. And then we have the keyframes coming in and blurring this out a little bit and it blurs out the edges here as well. So it looks a lot more appealing. So there you have the super simple and awesome way of doing a mask transition in LumaFusion without any third party apps. Now I really hope that you enjoyed this video, make sure to click on that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to this channel already and uh, if you're gonna make a video like this, you know, using the masking uh, techniques, make sure that you post this on Instagram and tag me so I can check it out. Now until next time, make sure to create some kick-ass videos in LumaFusion. Tag me anyway on Instagram if you have something that's made in LumaFusion so I can check it out. And until next time, keep on creating.